Well, hello and welcome to the Make Music Income Podcast, episode 71. Uh, we are having a good time doing these podcasts now. Um, we've had different people joining us. Dave, uh, Dave Croft joined us last week. This week, I kind of am going solo just because I have been, I'll give you my week's update here in a minute, but it's been a little funky for me. Uh, not feeling good this week a little bit. But I went to the doc yesterday and all is good. All is, I think all is good. So we're going to kind of uh, just continue to kind of play this by ear. If I have a topic that I think is great to bring someone in, and it's always great, great to bring Dave in. And I know he is just game to do this at any time. And of course, Stevie B, uh, we have been talking, we talk every day. Don't think that Stevie B and I have some big rift. We we, we thought about having a, a, a putting a, a, some kind of... Uh, uh, big thing together where we said, Ooh, Eric and Steve are having a big rift. And that's why Steve is no longer some dramatic uh, reality show way of, uh, of saying that Steve's not part of the podcast, but uh, in actuality, he was just, he's just uh, working like crazy, releasing a new course, um, trying to uh, just serve a lot of clients. So that's the way it goes sometimes. And, and, in two, the last two weeks, I haven't been able to do my Hello Composers Mastermind, which we'll talk about in a minute, just because of life things that happen. So uh, it's okay. We'll move on from there. So today's topic, as I talked about, as you saw in uh, on the thumbnail and stuff, it's called AI, AR, and other A's, other answers uh, I want to talk about today and questions from you. So if you are... Um, you know, if you have questions, I would love to know. Arco says, we are missing Steve on the podcast. I know, me too. Uh, we miss each other. But um, yeah, we're going to talk a, a little bit in depth about these two technologies that uh, have, have really made a splash over the past month. I mean, these have been coming up for a long, long time, years and years and years. AI music has been happening since the mid-teens, maybe before that. We've been using AI tools all this time. It's just become a hot, hot hot word right now. Same with AR, augmented reality. And um, But something big happened this week that we'll talk about here in just a second. First of all, let me go through my week this week. Um, it has been a little crazy. Like I said, I've had some health things, not feeling that good a little bit. And I uh, went to the doc and, and I think we've got that somewhat under control. But um, I've been teaching, started a new class this week, bunch of good guys. Uh, if you're watching guys, and I know one of you watches already and subs to this channel, thanks so much for being part of the class so far. We're having a good time talking about cool stuff, really just uh, kind of laying down the, uh, the, the digital audio stuff and kind of getting to that. Um, also this week, I have uh, gotten a song out that I've been working on for a while. It's a kind of a corporate um, piece. And so far it's been accepted to, uh, pond five and a one day accept, uh, accepted thing to audio jungle one day. It's not taking used to take weeks and weeks. And now I got accepted in a day. Uh, let's see what else happened. Um, I am trying to, I pitched some songs, some new songs to a, a an exclusive sync library that I've kind of just had sitting around. I've just decided sometimes, you know what you may, listening to this, have songs that are just sitting around songs that you're just, you, you've, you're not doing anything with. They're fully produced. You're going to put them on an album. Maybe you're going to just show them to somebody. Maybe why not get off your butt and put those things into the marketplaces, into the libraries, do something with them. Make, if it's a beat, put it to beat stars. If it's music that sounds good with game music, put it to game music markets. If it's a song that would would do well with uh, music libraries, either television type libraries and sync licensing and production music, or if it's something that might be good behind it's just a chill lo-fi tune that might be good behind someone's video. Put that to these libraries and let people find that so that you can make some music income from that. So yeah, I think that uh, it's it's important that we do something with this stuff. And that's what I've been trying to do still. I can't have a, a channel about make making music income if I am not actually doing something uh, in music income. 
and I'm just going to go over here to my main page in Facebook and say, hey, everybody. Now. Public. Everybody can see it. Why not? So that's that. Let's get let's get let's pull Facebook into this whole deal here. Um, I think the the stuff that I talk about here, I think, is so helpful to everyone. My goal here is just to share with you what's happening with me in this new time of life where I am working on my own compositions and trying to get them out and make music income from those compositions and also teaching others how to do this as well. Either do this through um, things like putting them on uh, libraries and putting them into Spotify and all that kind of stuff or putting them, I don't know, into your uh, uh into your daily work. I don't know, just just trying to get people to think about how to make income with their music in a lot of different ways. So if you have questions about that, please let me know. Um, Bradford says, thank you for getting started, PDF. I just joined PDF Pond5 and I've been writing. I have been writing and putting one song a day up there. Cool. Uh, Pond5 paid off very well for me last month. I may have talked about it. I had a huge month, but a lot of that was because of a referral that I, some referral money that I got from them. But uh, yeah, it's, it's something that brings me money every year. And boy, you know, I looked at my totals over the past three years and folks stock licensing and well, I should say non-exclusive music licensing where I am getting music um, out there into uh, libraries, into places like Song Trader, into other opportunities. It's, a, it's approaching 10 grand over the past three years, two and a half years. So uh, it's not that it's, it, and now divide that up into three years and tell me is, is all that work that I put into it, is it worth 10 grand? Well, I guess I might have to say, yeah, if you told me I was gonna make four, four or five grand a year doing this, I would say, yeah. So. Good job, Brad, for joining Pond5, and I hope it works out for you. So what else have I done this week? Uh, a lot of client work, as usual. I have clients that I'm helping do arrangements for. I just started um, doing a, uh, a chart for a client and trying to weed through a song that he has sent me, His um, just his song, with him singing it into a, his phone. No chords, no rhythm, uh, no key. Just I'm I'm just trying to decipher it right now. It's taken just a little bit of time, but we'll get it. And I think it's going to be a good song when we're done. I had another writer who I'm working helping his church uh, record in Nashville. They have shown me their song, and that song is uh, coming along. And so I'm giving thoughts on that song. I am working on an arrangement of Blue Skies for another client, a jazz song, Blue Skies. And then I am working for another client, I'm helping him right now with a business card. He's got a gig this weekend. He wants to hand them out, but also uh, preparing for his next album, which will come out soon, doing a whole album for a fellow in Manchester. I'll talk about that in a minute. And uh, as part of uh, the whole AI, uh, the whole AR thing, uh, I'll talk about that. But lots of things like that go on, and I try to do some of my stuff and some of the other stuff. Ooh, one other thing I want to talk about, folks, is uh, Muse Score 4. And if you don't know what Muse Score 4 is, you need to know because um, I have found I, – I've, I've been wanting to mess with it. I just spelled it wrong. It's Music Score. It's Muse Score 4. And go look this up. It's free software. It is a scoring program. It is a notation uh, program. And we use this to put notes on pages. If you have any goals to put something up, and I didn't even put it up. If you have any goals to put something up um, and, and get your music into sheet music form, uh, this is a 
great starter program to use. And I'm going to really highly suggest it. And, and I will likely be doing a, a review of it on the Hello Composer site. So, and you'll see that on here as well. But uh, I, I just, I'm shocked. And here's the big part of this MuseScore 4. They have uh, instruments. I mean, these are high quality instruments. You may have seen a video lately about a guy who was comparing the MuseScore 4 uh, orchestral instruments to the BBCSO uh, Orchestra by Spitfire, the free one. And let me tell you, this might be better. These, these, these might be better samples and sound better. Plus, you get the benefit of scoring it out so that you could upload it to arrangeme.com or other sheet music sites and be making music income that way. So uh, I, I would seriously suggest that you look at uh, MuseScore 4. Uh, just another thing I got into this week. And that was part of my week this week. And uh, the, one of the songs that I'm trying to get finished right now that I've talked about before is called Five Reasons. It's a classically based tune. So I am, I wasn't crazy about the mix. So I just decided to throw it into MuseScore and experiment on how to do that. And I will prepare a video about how I made that. And then maybe we'll just track that all the way into Arrange Me and some of these uh, sheet music stores and see how that does. All right. Um, hey, don't forget about something I started doing recently and, and, uh, I don't know how long I'll be able to do this just because there's only so many uh, hours in the day, but it doesn't take me very long to shoot a quick video and talk about my day, not my week. I talk about my week on here, but on this, um, on this Make Music Income Daily, I talk about each day, what I'm into that day. Sometimes you're hearing very specific things of where I am. I did one the other day from uh, one of the studios at school. I talk about libraries specifically that I'm serving that day. And these are things I don't talk about publicly on my channel or my podcast. And you can get this information directly from me. Very short videos. They're not shorts. They're not vertical. But they are uh, quick things. Uh, I, I do not do anything but look at the camera and talk. There's no editing. I just shoot it and I upload it. It's pretty quick and dirty. But it's the real stuff. It's the real behind the scenes of uh, what is going on with me on a daily basis. Past few days, I've been a little lax on putting something up just because I wasn't feeling well. But um, I think it's going to be good. I'm also going to offer it straight off of my site. So you can either do it here on, um, you can do it here on uh, YouTube, or you can also do it on my site. So right now, the best way to go to this and get involved now and the only way to get involved now is go to uh, youtube.com slash make music income slash join and you have to do this from a phone to put this in you won't see the join button on the site for some reason there's some kind of weird code that is not letting um the the people uh on on iphones and on tablets see the join page it's kind of one of the reasons why i don't think that make me that uh, the YouTube uh, membership thing is going to work very well. So I am going to be putting it on my main site and I'm also going to be putting it, uh, keeping it here on YouTube. So go there and see uh, if that works for you. You can find the link in the show notes below as well. Join me. I'm going to add some new stuff to it. You know, I'm, I'm also considering adding uh, to anybody who joins right now, uh, free email back and forth. I mean, uh, as much as you want as part of the membership. And I'll probably add some other unique things there. I'm thinking about some unique Make Music Income merch. And so check into all that kind of stuff and see if you're interested in being part of our membership. Um, all right. And let's now, with all that said, let's get to the news before we get to stuff. And folks, we have to talk about something that happened this week that I think is one of the more momentous things that I have seen come from a tech company in maybe a decade. You know, Apple has always been that company that puts something new out that we go, oh, this is new. I mean, they basically disrupted the entire music industry with the iPod and with iTunes. 
where you could put all your favorite songs in your pocket and just download what you want. It was unheard of. It was a game changer for the music industry. It cemented the end of the, of the compact disc and sent it reeling down. The CD ended up crashing at the end of 2010 uh, to the point where it's barely recovered from there. And then, of course, streaming came in. But this is a big deal. The, the Vision Pro um, by Apple was introduced this week. I want to share it with you and just talk about it for a second because I was blown away. And I don't blow away very easily. Um, but yeah, it is crazy. And hold on, my machine, my new machine wants to know if I am cool. All right. So let's go ahead and share the screen. Here we go. So here, here it is, folks, the Vision Pro. Now, yeah, you the on first look, it looks a little dumb. It looks like she's going scuba diving or she's going skiing. And uh, it's one of those things that at first, I when I first saw the what it looked like, I was like, well, I'm not so sure that this is something that uh, I would be interested in. But when I started looking at it and, and the fact that we were looking at glasses. At first you think, oh, it's just another VR headset. Who needs a VR headset? I mean, come on, it's old tech. <laughs> I've always said that I thought it was old tech, but when you put a face behind it you and then you see, it's actually showing the, the person being able to see through the glasses. And when you start looking at some of these things here, folks, you start looking at some of what it is offering. Watch this. Instead of this looking through it, suddenly you are seeing the actual icons that they put on and the icons pop up right in front of you. Now, first you might think, okay, still looks like VR. Who cares? Well, who cares is you can then decide to put all of your screens in front of you. Does this sound familiar music people? Can you imagine your DAW on all of these screens, different screens with different DAW screens, different mix screens. And you can see all of these things. You can have a very unique way to control all these. By the way, all of this is controlled with your hands. We're not controlling this with some kind of controller or some kind of stick or something. This is controlled with your hands. I mean, this stuff, see, she's just doing simple commands to call up Apple TV and all of these things. Um, you can do things, watch this. You're watching a movie, okay? You're watching it on a screen that's sitting in the middle of your TV. You say, hey, I wanna make this bigger. I wanna make this huge. And not only do I wanna make this huge, I wanna watch this in another environment. You can have these environments, um, just, it's super crazy. Now, I got good news and some bad news. Yeah, you can sit here at your desktop and be looking at all these screens. Um, they did some really good marketing for this. Look at this theater, okay? You're watching a screen, and then if you back out, I don't know if you can see this, it's kind of dark, but um, you can you can pee in the basketball game, you can watch all this kind of stuff. It's just crazy. I mean, um, you can put a huge football-sized screen around you, and in the background is uh, some kind of, a uh, big landscape that stretches all around what you're doing. So, and, and then here's the thing. This is futuristic stuff here. You are, you can shoot the scene that you're in, in 3D. I mean, folks, this is big stuff. So let's talk about why this is helpful for music people. Okay. Yes. You got to wear this goofy headset. But let's just stop this screen here and, and just talk about it from for a moment from music standpoint, from a music production standpoint and wanting to make music income. Number one, first of all, it changes our environment of music making. We can do really super, super things with this. Second of all, it, it brings, you saw where it was bringing other people into the picture, your Zoom things or your... In this case, I'm sure it was FaceTime and it was bringing different FaceTime people and just putting them in the room. This is, and folks, this is just the start. 
when this comes out, this is just the beginning of this technology. It's kind of like iPhone. When it first came out, it was bulky and it, yeah, it was cool. It didn't do that much. And now it's, it, it's attached to our hands at all times. It's a game changer on how we communicate. Um, Bradford Knight says, you can snowboard and compute at the same time. <laughs> That's what it looks like for sure. Isa says, yeah, that'd be hella dope. Those are two words I don't say very much. Um, but I, I just think that this is a technology that has come out that you're going to be remembering back. You're going to remember your old friend, Eric. I, I introduced the day it was announced. I went back from lunch because I watched the video while I was at lunch. And I went to my students and I said, you are going to remember tonight that I am introducing you to a technology that you now use all the time in 10 years or 20 years. And I think you guys are going to remember this podcast that uh, where I sat here and basically laid out for you the future. I showed you the, the beginning. And uh, like the iPad, which continues to be something that we use, um, and like the iPhone, the iPod, which change music, um, all of these things. You can even go back farther than that with Macintosh and talk about the way they took the personal computer and turned it into a daily useful thing. But all that said, I think this is big news and I just wanted to touch on it today because I, while they didn't show a lot of music things, it was mostly watching television or having meetings or doing uh, work on it. I think there's definitely work applications. There was a, a DJ app they showed, which might be pretty cool. Uh, Bradford and I says multiple DOS screens mix in the band, mix with the band in the room, even though they're in another state. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. I actually did that last week, but this could change that whole dynamic. Arco says this is mind blowing, but I think it would be hard to calibrate with your hands when you first use it. Um, well, we'll see, you know. Um, again, it's it's got cameras in the bottom of it, and I'm sure there are a lot of calibrations you have to do for that. Um, yeah, just imagine you see a DAW everywhere you look, right? Okay, um, let me go on with my next thing here. Uh, I do want to offer you guys something today for free. Um, you know, this these can be tools. These can be tools that we can use. And um, I made a recent uh, ebook. It's free. And basically, it just talks about um, tools. Um, I can't remember the name of the thing, but if you go to uh, makemusicincome.com slash free, you'll see my ebook um, about my tools and makemusicincome.com slash free. Let's just go to the page together. So if I go to the page and I go to this new ebook and I share it from the screen so everybody can see it, um, you can see uh, tools you need to make tools. You need to make music and make music income. Yeah. Everybody needs a place to start. And you might be listening to this podcast at some point or watching this podcast at some point and think I need a place to start. Um, but I don't have any tools. I have a computer. What do I do with it? Well, in this ebook, I really go through and just tell you about DAWs that are free software instruments, tons that are free and even some hardware, that's not free, but it's cheap. That will get you started making music like the pro you want to be. Um, you just you can't afford to not be playing the game with everybody else. And so you can find this at makemusicincome.com slash free along with all my other free ebooks. So go take a look at those. All right. I have more associated news with our topic today. And that is that more stock libraries, another stock library this week, came out with a with the email that we've been getting. We got one from Pond5 that said, guess what? You've already been enrolled with all your music. Thanks. Now, um, by the way, if you don't want your stuff enrolled with Pond5, they let you take stuff down really, really easily. But uh, Pond5 just did that. Uh, Audio Jungle sent us one last week that said, we're going to start letting... Um, machine learning happen with our music. If you don't want to be involved, take it down or, or opt out. And so they did give you the opportunity before they got going with it, as far as we know. And But this week, another, well, I guess I wouldn't call it as large as that. Maybe it's as big. It's an older library. 
online. I've been with them for a couple of years and I've probably made in the, uh, in the 300 plus range with them. So the, not nothing. I'm not going to mention their name because they said not to share this information, but it's pretty common knowledge. All I will say is their name rhymes with body o barks. So that's all I can say. I don't want to really get into <laughs> to that. You, you may not be able to figure it out by that high code that I just gave you. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching this. Make sure you join this channel. If you're new to this channel, anybody new would love to, to hear from you. We really love to hear from you if you're watching from Facebook, because I don't even know if Facebook is, is, is working here, but I think it would be interesting to know. Um, all right. So, uh, subscribe, do something, join the new, the new thing that I've got going on. If you want to be part of a daily behind the scenes of what I'm doing, you can join that here, but otherwise just be part of the podcast. Give me your questions, your thoughts about all this. There's going to be a lot of, of discourse about this. Uh, Bradford Knight says body o barks, a great site for dogs who mix. That's right. Um, so yeah, Arco like that one. All right, very good. Well, let's move, let's move in to today's topic here. Uh, no time like the present. AI, AR, and other answers. And let's just go ahead. I'm going to get my notes down because I have totally gone off script this whole thing so far. You might be saying, you have a script? Yes, I have a script. I totally forgot most of, of the beginning of my script. But that's okay. Let's really get into this, um, into this today. So, all right, AI, uh, all of these technologies, AI, AR, they are all coming pretty super fast, right? Um, even as I typed the, the script uh, for this, uh, what I want to say today, Apple was suggesting the next work, uh, the next word for me at every step, every, every word I typed, it was... As a matter of fact, when I typed suggesting the next word for me at, and it put every, and then I put, and then it put step. And so I didn't even have to literally write that because AI was working for me in that moment, putting the script together so I could talk about AI. Um, so, <laughs> um, so let's start with AI and uh, artificial intelligence. And um, just, I want to talk about two basic things I have to say about this. I mean, uh, I have a lot to say about this. Um, and, and it's not that negative, to be honest with you. But um, my main points here are, number one, I think there is so much chatter and, and uh, that started a while ago. And, and our we, we had to start a whole new section on our Discord. And by the way, if you don't know about our Discord, it's like a free message board to talk about all things music income. So go down in the description of either the podcast or the video and join our Discord. Come on, what are you waiting for? You can get answers and let people hear your stuff and talk to me. There's all sorts of stuff in there. So go to Discord. But, um, you know, there's a lot of people wondering, will AI put musicians out of a job? And this is the one that I like to talk about and debunk the most. Um let me ask you a question. Did, did suddenly computers put musicians out of a job when computers came along? Did, I mean, we all thought, I mean, this is like a uh, 2k remember year 2k. A lot of you weren't alive for uh year 2k or we thought at the year 2000, all the computers were going to break because a lot of the IBM PCs only went up to 1999. They didn't go to 2000. We thought, Oh, the world is coming. I literally work for a tech company for all of 1999, getting all the computer software for all our clients working with two, the year 2000 and above because just apocalypse was going to come when uh, that happened. Computers were just going to completely break. I don't know if anybody else was here in that, was dealing with that kind of thing, but I certainly was the entire year. And our whole goal was to get things completely ready for year 2000. But even when, uh, and around 2000 is actually when computers started to become super powerful enough to do audio on the computer. We could do a few tracks. We could do four tracks, then eight tracks, then 16 tracks. It took a while that before we could get into stuff. 
and there were a lot of people says, oh, I don't know about computers. I, I'd rather just work with tape because by the time these computers come in, they're going to take over the world and they're, they're going to make their own music and blah, 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 blah. Well, it didn't happen. What did computers do? They they did revolutionize the way we record, but what they didn't do is put anybody out of a job. Now, there's other tech that we've been using for the past 20 years that a lot of people think, well, why do we need singers anymore when we can just put on Autotune or Melodyne or some kind of software? We don't have to worry about good singers. All we have to do is have software. Well, I think if you've worked with any kind of software that fixes vocals and works with tuning, you know that that's not a thing. You know that we have uh, moved past that very much, very much. We are no longer, um, we are no longer fearing that really. So um, anyway, uh, Arco says, I can say for sure that AI will be generating new jobs in the music industry. Maybe, but I'm sure those jobs will be more uh, fixing things uh, and and adding uh, tools. Tool de development is already way underway and has been happening for years with AI technologies. And uh, if AI can replace our music job, then we pro we probably then probably we humans shouldn't do that. No, I don't. I this. Arco, I absolutely disagree with. No, no, I feel like no, I feel like I'm scolding you. No, we cannot think that we're going to be replaced because that's ridiculous. No computer is going to replace a human. And I think we all know that. But before I get too mad about that and get too ranty, I am, I, you might know, I sometimes get ranty. But anyway, uh, I think. We've got to think about this in a new way. Let me stay in my notes or I'm going to get way out of, <laughs> of bounds with this, with today's thing. Um, hey, do programs that you use like um, Ozone and that listen to the song and suggest EQ and suggest different kinds of mastering possibilities, do they put you out of a job? Do they put mastering engineers out of a job? I don't think so. Yeah, I mean... Listen, the people like me now, or, or people like yourself, maybe if you're making music on your own, if it, are, are you really going to be paying a hundred dollars to a mastering engineer anyway? Do you have a hundred bucks to put a hundred or more dollars to put to an, a mastering engineer uh, just by sending that to him and every single song you have, you're going to send to a mastering engineer to get mastered? No, you don't have it. I don't have it. So I am use, I've been using tools from Waze for 20 years. I've been using uh, L2 multi, -ma multi maximize ultra maximizer and uh, limited multi band compressor from waves for the last 20 years, 15 years as my kind of safety uh, mastering devices. And uh, they have the, the uh, limited band multi compressor has a little bit of AI built into it. It's not it's not AI AI, but it's it's a little bit of computer knowledge built into it. So it tells me where the 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 levels are good, and I don't even have to guess. I don't even have to listen. I can just kind of look and say, yeah. And and when I listen, it always works. Do you know? Do computers? Let me ask you this: Do programs that sort and help you find sounds put you out of a job? I think that's that's the whole point I'm trying to make. Um, Fabio says, I believe AI as it is right now is good to help specialists get results faster and to help non-specialists, this is important, to get generic results. Hey, listen, uh, I can give ozone to anybody or I can give it to a pro who knows how to use it. And the people who don't have it are still not going to get as good results as the pro who knows how to use it. I can give auto tune to anyone, but it may not, it'll sound crappy if they don't know how to use it. So all tools um, are, and this is the thing, tools are helpful and especially AI tools, the stronger and help more helpful they are, the better. We all need to move faster and stronger with our music. There's nothing in the tools that I use that is ripping off anybody there's no human losing their jobs because this tool, this AI tool helped me. Um, if I don't, I want to show you something actually. I want to show you today the, um, 
the file, the, 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 the thing that I use today, and is there a way for me to even call it up? Um, yeah, let's just call it Photoshop. So I want to show you the actual thing that I used to do the cover for this today. System preferences. Uh, no, I can't do that. Can't do that. Sorry. Um, maybe I can't present that to you. Present. Let's see if I can just present a screen. Hmm. Might not be able to do that. Well, if you look at the thing that I I said today, I sent today. Um, actually, yeah, I'll just do this. It's going to be a little freaky for a second. But if you look at this, let's see if you can see that. This is the, um, it doesn't look like you can see it. Let me see. No, it's still not sharing it. No, it doesn't want to share that kind of stuff with me. That's okay. If you look at today's, go back somehow and look at the uh, thumbnail I put on this video. That was designed by AI, okay? I, it was used, uh, the new AI in Photoshop uh, beta it has a generative fill, they call it, and it generates whatever you tell it to generate. Well, after several tries, I got it to generate some like computer musicians, you know, and uh, that worked out pretty well. It, it was, it took me a while to get it to happen, right? But it actually worked. And uh, again, like I said, took a bit to get the actual uh, image that I wanted. You got to type and retype what you're looking for. Let's see if I can share this. Yeah, can I share this? Let me share this. Oh, come on. Uh, no, uh, I can't share that right now. But anyway, um, I could share, uh, I could make something like that. Let me just look at it here. Uh, where I, I had two pictures of me, but I generated the AI musicians and I generated like a uh, an AR kind of guy wearing a VR headset. And guess what? That was a very helpful tool for me today to come up with a quick thumbnail for this. I need fast. I need help. Um, and Fabio says, when things start to get more specific, and what he means is specific to the, the task that you asked them to do, they've got to hire someone to do the job. They, AR could get it most of the way, and then you got to hand it to your art designer, and they have to go in and fix, just like I had to fix this up today. Uh, Arco says, creative works cannot be replaced by AI. AI works on past data sets, so I don't think AI will ever replace creative work. Right, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Marley Music, good morning, Mr. Marcus. Uh, the soul consciousness human spirit is irreplaceable. Just create, no doubt there. Um, Mark Paul says, I've opted out and requested that they remove all my tracks from the library. They refused as I'm on an exclusive deal. Yeah, they won't, re there's, there's two things you could, there's one thing you can do, Mark, and there's one thing you can't do. And we're, again, we're talking about body o barks, uh, which is not the real name, but I'll let you extrapolate the code of what that name means. But uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to opt out, uh, but uh, this specific uh, library just sent an email yesterday saying that they are going to do the machine learning thing and that you can opt out if you want to. So you can opt out but you still can't remove your tracks from the library because um, this particular library is a library that um, you're in, once you're in, they tell you up front, you're gonna be in forever. You cannot have your tracks taken down. So if you plan to do any kind of uh, other stuff, content ID or selling it to an, ex uh, you know, getting a, a sync, a exclusive sync deal, do not put it in that library because they are just, uh, they're just going to be, they're just going to be in there and you can't do anything about it. You can opt out of the AI stuff though, if you want to, but here's my thing about opting out of the AI mark. I don't believe that opting out of the AI is probably that, especially since this is the same stuff I have up at Pond5 and Audio Jungle and I'm already letting them do the AI. You'll have to pull it out of all the places if that's what you want. Uh, for me, I'm right now, 
my particular slant on this whole AI thing and letting um, these companies use my songs for machine learning is I see it as another type of in uh, a type of small income in a similar way to getting money from someone using it in a stock use, getting money for someone using it in a corporate use, getting money for someone using it um, in any kind of use that might give me some kind of pay. So this is another way the music is getting used in machine learning to bring income to me. And on the stock side of things, on the non-exclusive side of these music, these are songs that I can't do anything else with either. The, and, and I've already put out and made money on them in other ways, or they're developed specifically for non-exclusive uses by millions of people. Why not let millions of people use them on the AI side, on the, uh, machine learning side and use pieces of them. Uh, at this point, it doesn't matter as long as it's bringing music income back to me. Mr. Stevie B is in the house. Good morning. I tuned into Mr. Stevie B broadcast yesterday and like at the last second. And I was like, I'm going to put in something. I was joking, of course, because I hadn't put in any, gotten anything ready for 70s. But if you haven't seen uh, yesterday, Steve put on his channel a great, uh, time listening to Stevie, uh, listening to music that was from the seventies and Stevie had a really cool silk shirt. I don't know if it was a silk shirt. I used to wear silk shirts back in the seventies. That's probably the only, one of the few people in this, uh, in this podcast right now who actually lived in the seventies and went to discos. Thank you. Um, and wore those clothes. Yes, he's right. They are not comfortable. But uh, it was good to see you guys yesterday, and I'm sure there was lots of great stuff. Jim Stamper says, I've been using AI to do what I would call really advanced searches. For example, have it create a table for you comparing different plugins. Yeah. Um, I started to use it today for something. I can't remember if it was fine. Oh, I wanted to, to do some search on some websites to find me a song. I wanted to search um, Audio Jungle for a certain a certain number of classical music terms uh, uh, tunes to see if they were on there. And just FYI, it says it can't do that. Uh, Chat GPT told me I, it cannot search through websites. So maybe it's not allowed to search through sites that it doesn't have something to do with. But yeah, I think any kind of information sorting or finding or anything like that is is perfect for that. Tools are helpful. I mean, it's it's helpful to have these tools. Um, these are helpful things that help music minded people to uh, that, that can help us work faster. Just like the, the uh, thing that I did today for the thumbnail, help me make that thumbnail exactly the way I wanted to make it. I wanted it to look AI generated. I wanted it to have that look. And so I absolutely use Photoshop and their new generative fill capabilities. Let me tell you a scary thing about the generative fill thing. The other day I was, and this is a music use. I was working for a client who had taken a picture from the back of a, a piano and the camera was at the, at the rear of the piano, looking over the strings to her sitting at the keyboard and the strings went all the way, but they were covered by this ugly yellow strap. I guess they were keeping the piano together or doing some kind of work on the piano. And so I had this ugly yellow strap uh, and I couldn't see all the piano strings and it just made the scene ugly. So what I, I did was I circled the yellow strap, all of it. And I said, and I didn't even say anything. I, at first I said, remove yellow. And it kind of did it. The second time I said, I just didn't say anything. I said, just click generative uh, image or whatever. It got rid of that. And the strings were perfect going all the way up. Or if they weren't, I, 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 a couple of different times I tried it and finally got a beautiful picture. So let me tell you, folks. That, you know how much time that saves me? I would have had to literally draw the strings if I was an art designer. In this case, and, and even if it didn't draw them perfectly, I could probably go in and fix them. There were a couple other things on the piano where I just circled and I did something and it uses the information of what's behind it and what's forward it and completely got rid of that thing I didn't want to see on the piano. Super cool and a very, very helpful tool. I mean, it's not much different. Then when you go into Photoshop and you say, remove everything behind me. And, I, and when I'm doing my thumbnails, I'll, I'll do something and then I'll remove my image from the background. That is a form of AI. Uh, it, and it's a very, very useful tool. And I can't think that there won't be, 
Uh, hey, here's another one. I used RX7, or not RX7, RX, is it by Isotope? Uh, I used RX the other day because when Dave and I did the podcast last week, there was some kind of pops in there. I think it had to do with uh, some digital noise of some kind. And I used R, R, RX to get rid of those pops. And it did it through the entire broadcast. I mean, it was still there a little bit, but it was much better than the pops. And that is literally it listening to the things. I'm, I, I don't even know how. I think I just picked some kind of setting like remove pops or something like that. But for it to be able to do that, those kind of things, uh, Melodyne, taking your vocal and then uh, listening, you know, Melodyne, the full version can listen to chords and write down all the notes. I mean, this is, we used to call this stuff alien technology. And finally, we have this alien technology. Thanks to the aliens, we are ready to, ready to rock with our music. So it's helping us make better music and it's helping us do things that we couldn't have done before. There's a few comments here in the chat. Um, Fabio says, the AI stuff related to music I've heard till now doesn't sound good in terms of mixing, master, and creation. Even platforms that write MIDI files for you to mix and master are extremely generic. Yeah, that's not here. And you know what? Maybe that never really gets here without extreme stealing. Um, we'll see. But it is crappy sounding right now for sure. Uh, I used, uh, Arco says, I used at chat GPT to search music universities I should apply to. And I also use some music libraries. Good. Uh, genuine free Mil Willie says been playing around with Google's AI kitchen. Band lab has a strong starter AI tool. It generates MIDI audio tracks and even stem. So cool. So yeah, tools are good. Tools are helpful. And I think if we're using AI with tools, that is a good thing. Like, like I said, I use, I'm starting to use AI. Uh, I use ozone all the time. And that has a strong AI component where it listens uh, to the song and it tells me how best I might master it. Key word here, might master it. It's not telling me this is perfectly mastered. It's giving me a starting point to do some mastering in. And I think that's really, really important. Um, let's see, I've been uh, putting vocals into Autotune and Melodyne for years. And when I go back and I hit perfect pitch, it suggests what it thinks is the perfect pitch. Sometimes it hits it, sometimes I have to fix it. Um, I still have to finagle it and make it just right. But man and machine can live in harmony, my friends. Hey, they eventually figured it out for the Matrix. So, oh, and Wally. -E. So uh, just about every other tech versus man movie, usually at some point, the humans and the robots figure it out together, except for, of course, a few exceptions like the Borg and the Terminator. They're just bad. They're just evil. They're just evil, evil robots. Um, okay, I have one more point uh, on this, and that is, you know, the other reason we shouldn't be afraid of AI and computers and this is my favorite one. And this is my favorite example. Not, not that they're good tools and not that they're going to replace us and all that kind of stuff. And, and somebody said earlier, yeah, they're never going to be replace us as musicians, especially because we are human. We have a heart. We have a brain. Uh, we are, are, we are creating and, uh, yes, our computers and our brains work a lot like computers. We take data that's fed to us and we repurpose that into our own things. And a lot of people have said, well, AI is just the same thing. Okay, it's not the same thing. In some ways, machine learning is much like the way humans learn. But what we have is a mysterious thing called a soul. And we have an, an innate sense of right and wrong, right? <laughs> wrong, right, wrong. We have feelings and we have urges and we have moods. We have ideas that don't come from pre-generated suggested things. We, we just have them. They just pop into our minds. Something reminds us of it. Maybe that is a form of uh, machine learning. We're learning from, we see an idea and it strikes another idea in us. But every single one of us was born 
to be different, to be unusual. There's a lot of unusual people watching right now. We were uniquely made. We were born of different parents. Computers are not made of this. You know, we are we are totally unique beings made by two unique people that were not together when they were born. They went through a life together before they made us. And so they were, and they were made different from two other people's. We've all got these melting pots of stuff coming into our brains, into us, whether it's our talents, whether it is our, um, our, our ideas, whether it is our upbringing and our values, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not trying to make a case for why humans are better than computers. I don't think I have to do that. But all of us have different experiences and things that happen to us. So what that does is we can simply create more uniquely out of the thin air than any other, uh, really any other human. You can create something completely different than the next person. Anybody watching in this room, in this uh podcast live right now can think better. Anyone listening has a unique way of putting uh, either a phrase or playing a chord or thinking of notes than anybody else, especially any machine that's ever made. Um, they could probably learn from you. If you let them learn from your music, maybe they could learn that. But AI compositions, what they want what they want to make me do, and this is my, this is just my take personally. I just want to get composing. Every time I hear someone say, oh, the, the AI made this or AI can do this. All it makes me want to do is go to my piano. I mean, a real piano, you know, uh, and just sit there and design and just be obtuse and different and unique. It, it excites me to want to make something amazing and magical. And uh, so take both of these things to heart. I'm going to say, number one, tools are helpful. We just talked about that. Whether it's a hammer made of wood and steel or a hardware computer that does some, helps you do get work done. Um, whether it is an AI tool, a software AI tool like Ozone, it's okay. Use those tools to to take your creativity to the next level and don't worry so much that a program is going to come out and replace you because you are unique. Be unique. Be you. Don't worry if there are experiments uh, to have computers create music and you're hearing this and you're hearing people all oh, listen to this. Look what somebody did. You will still create something that is entirely you. Unless, of course, you are only copying and pasting things or you are only using an AI program and then just not even make any changes to it. If that's the case, then, yeah, you're not creating anything new and you are just using this technology to create something. But the way that creating is true composition is that you are you doing it. I'm going to do another video on this for the composing channel, I think, uh, and kind of dedicated to composing an AI and how we can find ways to be us. And, you know, have you ever felt in this whole deal that you just feel like, man, I am so tired of this, of the, all this AI stuff and machine learning. I just want to turn everything off and I just want to go play my instrument. And I just want to make something and not even tell anybody and not even put it up online or anything like that, which is funny because sometimes that becomes the best thing that you can make. Uh, let's see what else everybody is saying here. Um, Chat GPT told me that it doesn't want to replace us. So I think there's the answer. <laughs> yeah, of course, it's not lying robots. Um, Fabio says, maybe AI will learn faster how to rep reproduce and create electronic oriented stuff. But for people who create more organic music, probably that'll be hard for AI to emulate so much dynamics. Well, I don't know about that. You need to go watch some videos about AVA, AIVA, and how it has taken 20,000 scores and repurposed that into an, a wholly new original score, complete with dynamics, complete with movements and uh, instrumentation that is very good, orchestration that's very strong. So, but again, I, 
I, and I, and guess what? Maybe that's just another piece of art. That's just another tool we use to make a piece of art. Uh, is it completely original though? Probably not because the only thing completely original is something that somebody makes out of their head. And a lot of times, have you ever made a piece and it totally sounds like something else? And you're like, uh, this sounds like exactly like another song and you know it. And, and yet you, you go forward with it because it does sound like something else, but you did make it. Uh, Fabio also says, actually, even electronic music has a strong abstract component. If you want to thrill people, there are video games, songs that give me chills still to this day, Donkey Kong country, for example. Well, there you go. All right. Well, I want to move on to the second part of what I want to talk about today. And this won't be quite as long. I know we're over an hour already, but Hey, we're having fun. And, uh, right now I'm only doing about one long video a week and then a bunch of shorts. I'll talk about that in a minute, but, uh, yeah, shorts. You, you never thought you'd see me doing a bunch of shorts, but we'll explain that in a minute, but let's talk about augmented reality here. And you know, when people were telling me about virtual reality and, and people are saying, Oh, virtual reality is making a, com a comeback. Um, uh, Oculus and um, PlayStation VR. That's the next level for video games. Folks, they were telling us that 20 years ago. Literally 20 years ago, I was doing VR applications and VR programming and making music in VR. VR has been around so long and has been so uh, disappointing in the long run that uh, I, when, when it, we've had this recent resurgence of VR, VR, everything's going to be VR. I'm thinking, and we see everybody with their headsets on and they can't see anybody and they're walking into walls. It's so dumb. It's just not a great, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think that uh, VR, virtual reality, is where we need to go. And I, whenever anyone talked about this, I would say, AR to me seems much more useful. And we've seen AR in a lot of movies. Tony Stark had the AR glasses that could call up little interfaces and do all sorts of stuff. And um, so I, I think that AR is certainly something that, that we need to think about. Let me see where I have this. Um, like I said, uh, we just showed you the Apple uh, Vision Pro plus pro uh vision pro and uh you know you need to go and watch that and it's uh, entirely on the apple broadcast it's about an hour and 21 minutes into the apple presentation but it's worth sitting there and watching all that they're going to do with it and that you can do with it it will continue to blow your mind so please go do that for once apple has actually innovated here um and i do think it's going to change the world like some of their other products have I mean, we've been doing for years. This is the iPhone 14, and it is unlike anything we've ever had before. No, it's not. It's exactly. I bought an iPhone 14 uh, Pro, and it's exactly like my iPhone 12 Pro. I mean, they, they look exact. They look and do the same thing. The, even they, the feel is the same. Size is the same. Shape is the same. Uh, cameras are the same. Just a little higher tech uh, software-wise. Same thing, but this is not, and these, this, uh, augmented reality glasses, and I'm sure they're not the only people and there will be other people come to be jump on this bandwagon for sure. But I think this has the possibility to change the music business as well and really affect us in the music business in the same way that the iPad has for mobile computing or laptops have for mobile computing or, um, lots of computer things that have, but can you imagine walking into your bedroom and they showed somebody doing this, walking into the bedroom and calling them a, a meeting, but walking into uh, a, a bedroom and putting on the goggles, which will likely slim down to like glasses like this, or even contacts. People are already making that leap, man. Can you imagine if these were contacts? Um, and then just look at how all the other things, the iPhone and the iPod and uh, the iPad, they've all gotten sleeker and sexier and nicer looking. But then you could go into your room, start this up, open an environment and, and have other people pop in and make the environment a studio, a 360 degree recording studio 
Make it any studio you want. You could make it the highest quality studio in the world. Just make it a big studio. You walk in there, you call up all your other musicians in their own boxes. They are all patched in. And hopefully at some point we could have technology. And, and we actually almost have this technology now. I'll talk about it in a second. But where you could call up musicians, call up an engineer, you could call up all the people you need. Maybe you have a musician in Nashville on the line and you guys are doing an overdub session and he's a singer. Uh, maybe you're cutting a whole band or a whole orchestra in a studio and it's like you are right there. Now, um, what about a feature? And I don't know if you guys saw this. I think you did. I think I showed it to you when we were looking at the news item, but what about the feature that lets you record a 3d scene? I mean, you can literally record it you could use those kind of high res. If it's, it's a vintage high res video, you could use that for music videos and marketing or just sharing it with your client as part of your fee um, that they can't attend the session because they're in Manchester, England. And as you may remember, I talked about this last week. This actually happened. I did a session two weeks ago with a client who was in Manchester, England, I'm here in Orlando. We were tracking in Nashville, Tennessee in a studio. They hooked us up with a Zoom uh, camera and so we could talk to them, but then they would put the Zoom camera on the session. And then they also hooked us up with something called Listen To, which is a streaming uh, thing that you can put into Pro Tools and just stream it out to a website. So I could go to a website and listen to the actual stream of the master while they're working in stereo it's it's probably just about 320 mp3 but it sounded great so it's not just the future where we can do stuff like this i can do that now i just did it last week but can you imagine adding in the component of the goggles and the the studio and the ability to record the environment that you're in this will be completely game changing for the music industry. And I think it's something that we need to think about and watch out for and be ready for. So um, think about the way the, you put on a pair of glasses and suddenly you can work Iron Man style. Your, all of your uh, commands come up and everything like that. Now, is this gonna fly? We've had touch screen things before. And on one hand, you might say, yeah, we had the Raven uh, touch screen thing where we could pull uh, things up before by touch. And some people have said, yeah, we had that, but we also, it was also a, a literal drag sometimes because it wouldn't come up or work. But now they just put iPad uh, and Final Cut Pro, by the way, on, I mean, they just put Logic Pro and Apple Cut Pro on uh, the iPad. And so people still want tactile use of making music. And there's a lot of tactile type of uh, guitar uh, strings and keyboard things and people are wanting to make beats that way. So tactile virtual ways to, uh, to control audio might be the possibilities that we've been waiting for and be interested in. So these are all exp uh, uh, expensive right now, by the way, I want to make sure, you know, I didn't mention this when I was showing off the Apple tech, but that headset starts at $3,500. So yeah, it's all new. It's all super expensive right now. But remember, early super keyboards like the Fairlight and the Synclavier, they cost $10,000, $20,000 at the time. The original uh, synths that you can buy now for $800 cost $5,000 when they first came out in the 70s and 80s. So um, and, and some of these that we can now buy these, these plugins of these things for $47, you know, or something like that. So all right. Well, let me just give you my thoughts on AI. I already talked to you about AI and what I think. I think AI is going to be um, basically um, a winner. Um, and I think uh, it's going to be something that can help us in the future do things. I don't think it's going to replace us, folks. If it's going to replace you, then this might not be the thing for you. I've been on a real kick about saying the truth and telling people what I think is the truth but it's not going to replace you if you're not um, if you're not working and focusing on being a better musician and growing and all that kind of stuff. If you're just going to use these tools and be lazy and not learn any, any real skills, then maybe 
it could replace you. But for those of you who are focused, who are out there, who are working every day to be a better musician, be smarter, be faster, I think these tools are only going to help you. And then as far as AR goes, I think AR is going to be something that from this day, from the day they announced it this week, it's going to change the way we work in the world, the way we work in the marketplace, the way we work uh, at our jobs, the way we drive, the way we uh, get food, the way we see things, the way we watch entertainment. It's going to eventually change everything. Think of how television changed the movie industry. I mean, we still go to movies because it's a fantastic thing. But if I could sit at home with some kind of apparatus that let me put something up on a movie screen that is as big as the movie screen at the theater with better quality, with, remember, all of this stuff with the headset comes with AR, not AR, Atmos surround sound. Uh, this is all coming and fast. I could have put uh, Atmos and uh, spatial audio into this discussion today because all of that is coming too. All of that is part of all this revolution of AI and AR. And, and then you've got Atmos spatial uh, listening. These are all technologies that aren't in the future anymore. They're all here now. They just have to be refined and brought down to the level where everybody can use this. Uh, it won't be long until another uh, technology comes out, which is holographic technology, which brings up computer screens there that you can touch like a touch screen. And that will be the next one that's, uh, I don't know if that's actually happening yet, but I think that will be another thing. And then we won't need glasses at all. We'll just have the holograms in front of us that we're touching and stuff like that. So what do you think? Leave uh, a message below, leave me a comment and tell me what you think of all this stuff. Anybody have any last comments here on the live uh, podcast? I appreciate everybody learning. Thanks so much for sitting around and, and uh, having a, a lovely cup of tea with me. I really enjoy these uh, days on Friday where we can sit and talk and I can go through all this stuff. Any last comments, let me know. I'm going to sign off for today and actually do some music of my own here with very little help, if none, from AI and using no AR either. No A or AI or AR about to be used. Uh, Bradford just wants it to be known. Humans will prevail. <laughs> okay. I think you're right. We have until this point. So I think we're good. But I just want to say thanks, everybody. I hope this has been a good conversation. If you have any last comments, put them in to this conversation. It's been a, a, a fun ride. Uh, signature cheers. Thanks so much for being here today. Everybody so much. Arco, thanks for being here. Willie, thanks for being here. Fabio and Jim and Stevie B dropped in. Mark Parr, uh, Marcus has been in here. Lexi Sugar says, I think AI will improve our music of creation. I believe you. Um, Bradford Knights, thanks for your crazy uh, thoughts today. Uh, I so good to see you. Thanks everybody for being in here and we will see you next week on the make music income podcast. And that's all I got for you for now. See you later.